When you think of peer pressure, do you think of millennials? After all, we're the generation who calls its own shots, does its own thing. So is going along to get along an issue for us? Let's talk about it. This is what I wish you knew about peer pressure. Welcome to I Wish You Knew. I am Brittany Timmons. We millennials are all about social media. Our thumbs are in overdrive, posting, texting, and trying to keep up. But does all that tempt us to succumb to going along with the crowd? And is all peer pressure negative? Here to tell you what they wish you knew are... Yasmin. Hey, I'm Caleb. Hey, I'm Mahogany. Hey, I'm Wayne. So y'all, let's talk about it. Does social media make you feel like you have to be a certain way, look a certain way, just be a certain type of person? Yes, definitely. Right. Um, I feel like uh, this, this idea of peer pressure, mm -hmm. I think there are both negative forms of peer pressure and also positive forms of peer mm -hmm. pressure. Right. So when I see social media, when I'm scrolling on Instagram, um, when I'm scrolling on Snapchat and I'm seeing people's stories and I see them either they're like always so fas fashionable, mm -hmm. they're always partying, they have a drink in their hand or they're at a hookah lounge. Now that, I don't know, it's up to interpretation whether that's positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Um, type of peer pressure and then there are these women um, whether they're models or whether they're just like housewives or whoever <laughs> or a 16 year old right. and they get 5,000 likes 20,000 likes right. you know based off of their their body but a lot of times they'll be wearing like you know revealing bathing suits and all of this and so as a preacher and as a, someone who wants to be in media it's like mm -hmm do I have to dress like that and look like that so that I can have all the followers? Does that equal success? So I don't know what you think. No, I agree with you. I just kind of feel like, well, for one, let's be clear about this. You always see everyone when they pop in and you're not when they're on their regular day stuff. So it's right. just kind of like, is this a life you're trying to portray or is this your everyday? Now that's not for us to judge that. But at the end of the day, it's like, I feel like what you put out is, is showing who you are as a person because mm -hmm. that's what people are seeing and they don't know who you are. So they're judging by what you post, yes. the quotes you're posting, who you're following. Like people go in and see who you follow, who's following you. Like it's really depth I'm getting in tune with it as a millennial I'm like oh it's deep but at the same time I think we also have to make a conscious effort of what we're putting out on social media and I think a lot of people either they come off as attention seekers or are you on there to relay a message right. and it's a fine line and it's a time, really right? fine line and then like you like you talked about with the models and they like it seemed like sex sales and women are always being sexualized and it seemed like oh that's what's attracting the opposite sex but I feel like at the end of the day like I don't need to be naked to to feel to sexy heart, and like get a follow picture. or get a like and I think that's where maturity comes in with social media and then it's sad like you said 16 year olds 15 year olds are on online looking 25 now and you and grown men are following them, so it, it's like it's, it's a thin line. It can go either way. So, so I don't fellas, know. with that being said, when you scroll down social media and you're looking at girls and things of that sort, what does their pictures or their profiles say to you? What message is it giving off? I actually think this is like a very interesting topic because I follow like a lot of uh, well, going to Howard, I you know I have a lot of female friends and mm -hmm. I follow a lot of females on social media, and the interesting thing is like they'll have thirty thousand followers or you know. Uh, around that number, but I know them as people. So it's funny to see them like as every day, like, hey, let's just go get something to eat. Yeah. And then you go into their comment section of their social media and you know, there's guys, oh, I would do anything for you, or you know, like, you know, things <laughs> like that. So crazy, so, I drink your back, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's so funny, it's so funny because I'm like, oh, I know you, you know, like I'm not thinking yeah. about you in this any way, but in terms of just like the way it is portrayed on social media, I would say, you know, as a guy, I do, I like, you know, I appreciate sometimes when I, see you know very sexy or beautiful pictures but at the same time I don't know I feel like it does have like a little negative tint on what is attractive you know because at the end of the day when I'm meeting you I'm not meeting you on 10 all the time like maybe I might like you the day you're just wearing sweatpants you know so I feel like that's just more of in your own personal like your own personal outlook because 
I don't see it changing. I don't really see social media changing in a way of like, okay, everyone's just gonna be clothed now, you know? But I feel like you have to internalize your own values and standards of, oh, is this what I wanna right. promote? And I feel exactly. like that at the end of the day is what's gonna show off to yourself, like to your peers, because at the end of the day, people know you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's social media followers, yeah, then they might soak it up, but it's like the people that you're actually interacting with, they get to know the real you. So if you're the same on and off, Instagram, you shouldn't really have any problems, but if you are, you know, portraying a lifestyle that's not you, mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah, I that's what I would say. But I think yeah. that's what social media is. I think it's a facade. For some people, yeah. social media is some people's diary, it's their mask, you know, like, I think people really cater to social media to be that avenue of acceptance. What and they? okay, you know, like, I'm never gonna take a picture with no filter. I'm never gonna take a picture with no makeup. I'm not gonna post these things because these things aren't gonna attract, attract likes. So, so I have to make sure the, the perfect true. picture gets, you know, I put that perfect picture up on there to get those likes, to get those acceptance for my numbers to go up. And that's mm -hmm. what it all, that's what it all is. It's about the numbers. It's about the, who's looking at me right now. Mm hmm Caleb? What it's, you think? Whenever I see that, I just ask myself, is it worth it? It's like, do you actually want to put that, like everyone is saying, that, that kind of message out that I need to have this type of revealing picture, I wear these type of clothes. I do appreciate it. Like he said, I like it. I'm like, all right, she's fine. Like, Click. Too shy. But, you know. <laughs> what about, yeah, what about like for that. the guys? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, yes, there's a there's a lot of feminine energy on social media. Mm -hmm. But what about the guys? Like, do you all follow other gentlemen? Um, okay, wait. Thing? Before we before we get to that question, let's hold that point real quick. We've got to take a break, but stay with us. We'll be right back with more. I think social media is a lot of Welcome back to I Wish You Knew. So fellas, we were talking about a lot of the women's form of pressure that they find. What kind of pressure do you find specifically from social media? I feel it's a few types of pressure. Cause I see, I follow a lot of my friends back home. They're like personal trainers, like buff mm -hmm. Billy Blanks. They're like the rock. It's unnecessary how many abs they have. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> do I need to like, I need to get in the gym as soon as I get on Twitter, but it, it's, as I don't think we have as much pressure as women do. Thank and I'm you. so thankful. I, it's, <laughs> Thank I'm, you for acknowledging that. Cause it's I hard. do, because I'm hard to be a young woman in is. 2017. I'm like, because you have to be on 10 all the time. And I'm like, it's, that has to be nerve wracking. I'm like, you, it's, that's, that's why it. I'm so thankful. And there's, you go. Wayne, what about you? Yeah. Do you um, have I would say media? for me, I follow a lot of like fashion. Like a, a lot of fashion accounts on Instagram, like Twitter and things like that. What I say for men, anyway. And I feel like for me, my peer pressure comes in with like buying the latest clothes and things like mm -hmm. that, or like being fly or different things. And something I see like guys do, which I, I think is very corny, but they always are the ones with the most followers, are the ones that are like, you know, you gotta treat a woman right, or you know, like they have oh, like yes. those corny Yo. accounts and stuff like that. So I feel like <laughs> that's like a peer pressure for men in a way, because like, you know, nowadays, it's like such a minefield on social media. Like you say anything wrong and like, you know, someone from a whole nother state could construe what you were mm -hmm. saying to be, you know, you're not feminist and X, Y, Z and stuff like that. So I feel like there's peer pressure in that sense that, you know, we now have to be on our P's and Q's, you know, just like online and socially, which I think is a good thing. It can be good, but at the same time, I feel like sometimes it stops us from having real conversations because people are now, you know, decorating what they're saying as opposed to what they actually want to say. Right. Because, you wow. know, the pressure of awesome. people actually, you know, coming at them in any type of way. So. so what kind of pressure, peer pressure, do you find in your inner circles? Mm -hmm. um, find or found? Because I understand from my my vision, you know, when you find certain pressures or people that just shouldn't be in your inner circle, they get eliminated. Mm. They get kicked out. They got to go. So what kind of pressure have you encountered with people that you know? Hmm. Where do I start? Let's say. Yes. <laughs> the friends I had in 2008 are not all the friends I have in 2017. And why is that? 
because I feel like we grow and we want different things and we want to go in different directions. And I feel like as you get older and when the things are of a priority become important, you look around the people who you're around and feel like, are they making me grow or are they mm -hmm. making me want to stay content? Because they're not ready to go to the next level. And you got to realize not everyone's going to make it to the end. Everyone has their season. So you have to get to a point where you have to learn, okay, this was our season and this is where it ends. Yeah. I love you, but this is when I need to move forward because you're not ready to take that step yet. And it's okay. I want people around me who's gonna encourage me, who's gonna motivate me, right. who wants to challenge me. And mm -hmm. I think we get so caught up on longevity because I've been friends with this person since freshman year right. of high school. I've been friends mm -hmm. with her since college, but then, okay, we're not in college anymore. We're not in high school. We are young yeah, adults. Yeah. And I'm not trying to go out to D.C. in the club every Friday through Sunday. I mean, there's a club open every day or go out and drink. Like, I'm like, let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. Let's think of a business plan. Right. There you go. So it's like, it's you, where your conversations. You have to listen to the conversations yeah. that are going on around you. I mean, what about and you guys? And I think, too, with your inner circles, I know I found it's certain things that's not worth fighting for anymore. My fight mm -hmm. and my energy needs to go in other directions. So if you're every single time I don't. Um, invite you out and I'm out with these friends and you want to be petty and you have an attitude about it, then maybe you shouldn't be around. Exactly. Because I'm not thinking of it as the mindset of, oh, I'm being petty today and I'm not going to invite her. It just so happened. Or maybe you don't need to be with this group of friends. But I find it's other energy, I mean, other avenues that my energy needs. So that has caused me to kick people out of my circle and things of that sort because the pressure that they put on me is not pressure that I want. That and I want know I don't me. want it, so it's no need for me to fight for you. Exactly. For me, um, I'm, I'm a little weird. Um, and so I've never had a large group of friends. Like I've seen- That's some, not weird. It's not That's weird not at okay. all. No. But the thing, Smaller the better. The thing is in terms of, um, you know, when we're talking about peer pressure and, and what we're seeing in our inner circles, mm -hmm. my inner circle are mainly folks who are 10, 20, 30 years, about 20, 30 years older than me, mm -hmm. right? So they're like uber successful and I just want to, suck up all yeah, like yeah, of their yeah. knowledge yeah, but I also totally. feel very sometimes I feel insecure and I feel insufficient like I'm not doing enough you know mm -hmm. I should be speaking and charging thou you know a thousand or thousands of dollars to speak and I should be speaking at universities and I should be mm -hmm. you know I should be po uh, modeling for for this company and that company and I'm looking and I'm like well damn like they get to do all that stuff but like what's wrong with me yeah. And so that's kind of the struggle that I have with social media. And I have to remember not to compare myself. But if I'm looking at someone who's a few years younger than me and they have, you know, maybe thousands or millions of followers and they're traveling the world and speaking, mm -hmm. you know, I have to look at myself. I'm like, well, what am I doing wrong? Which is. That's not necessarily accurate. But yeah, but I, I think it comes naturally. That's the naturally. kind of world that, that we live in. That we live in. Absolutely. It's those that things pressure. in your face, and it makes you just automatically think. Not that you want to, but when you see, okay, this person is traveling. I have some friends that just bought condos and stuff like this yeah. on the south side. And I'm like, yo, I'm still trying to make an acting career pop off. You know, it's but like I these think deadlines. It's, 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 it's like these yeah. imaginary deadlines that we kind of give ourselves. Like by 25, we thought we were going to be yep. doing this. You know, how about houses and be married right. and and look, we in that age frame and maybe all of us are not there yeah, yet. Y'all, I feel like we can sit here and talk about this all day. We've got lots more to talk about, but we'll be right back with more, so stay with us. But I think it's exactly what you said. It's imaginary. Um, Welcome back to I Wish You Knew. We've been talking about peer pressure among our generation, but we're not the only ones who think it's a topic that bears discussion. We've welcomed a group of millennials from Household of Faith Church in New Orleans who took over the couch to tell us what they wish you knew about peer pressure. Hi, my name is Shayna Miles, and we are from New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome to I Wish You Knew. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Woodfox. Hi, I'm Heaven Barrier. Hey, I'm Benaya Harvey. Hello, I'm Maya Carter. Hi, Desha Kaye. Darius Kaye. Antoine Barrier. So guys, it is now, we're in the, living in the 21st century. How when we have so much society pushing for us to be ourselves, how do you guys think there's still so much peer pressure going on? Shana, that's a good question. Um, I feel like personally, um, 
I'm always juggling between um, my mom's ideals and what she expects, you know, us to look like and what I personally like feel like doing and that difference and trying to balance that and juggle that. And I always feel like that's a, um, that's a very like strong pull for me to be myself, but then also understand like my mom may or may not be used to what I'm doing. I also feel like with social media too, you have like an ideal picture of what being yourself looks like. You know, everyone wants to be different and cool. And so, yeah, you're being yourself, but like subconsciously, like you see these people glorified, like celebrities and stuff like that. And you still kind of want to be that. So it's like, you're trying to balance being yourself, but being the right version of yourself that's cool enough to get noticed. And then I'd also think with, uh, another thing with social media is that we have this idea of what a carefree free black girl and black boy looks like. You know, so on Twitter, you'll see the black boy with flowers in his hair. Oh, that's black boy joy. Or you'll see the black girl with her melanin popping. This is going on and she's wearing this color, that color, this, her hairstyle, this type of way. And it's like, just because that's her image of her black girl joy, or black boy joy, doesn't mean that you have to have the same image. So they see that and they're like, oh, if that's black girl joy and black boy joy and that's melanin popping, I have to do that too. But no, be your own black boy joy, be your own black boy girl, you know, black girl joy, you know? Not only does social media play a part in peer pressure, but your friends do too. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that, like, it could be even your closest friends and they have, like, a huge impact on what you do, what you say, and how you act. So it's like friends, family, social media, TV, it's like peer pressure is everywhere. I agree with that. Uh, being in college, I realized that the people that you hang out with influence you so much, like you were saying, Liz. Uh, recently, I hung out with, like, a group of guys that a lot of people felt like really didn't do much when I felt like I did so much and I had to look back over my semester and kind of realize like how much did I actually do you know hanging out with these guys and it came up to the point where we went to a party and this one girl literally asked me was like why do you hang out with them like you're nothing like them and I'm like why do I hang out with these people <laughs> you know and I realized I didn't feel like I was peer pressured to like hang out with them or anything like it was my own will but I had to realize subconsciously that like they were kind of like bringing me down, you know, so mm -hmm. it's interesting. And I also think like when people think about peer pressure, they just think about like big things like, mm -hmm. oh, like drugs or alcohol. They don't think about, oh, the way I dress or just like little things like that. All right. Also, I think that peer pressure oftentimes get like gets a, a negative connotation. Yeah. Um, when peer pressure can be one of the, the best things for somebody as long as it's a, a good outcome, uh, a good focus because, I mean, honestly, uh, peer pressure has been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to get rid of and there's a reason for that because you, you want peer pressure in some situations so it can be used uh, both ways, uh, both negative and positive. Yeah, and it's just like, it's also kind of like how your, your mom used to say, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Uh -huh. And it's just like, you don't even realize that that's actual peer pressure. And it's just yeah. like, anytime I can look at your circle of friends and say, they're gonna be lazy, they're gonna be non-productive, but then I can also look at the same thing and be like, man, she hangs around a lot of people who wanna be successful. Mm -hmm. So she has to be successful. She hangs around a lot of people who are successful. So it's like, it's bound for you to be successful. And it's just like, they also say, you know, hang with somebody who's like a step above you. Right. And then somebody that you can also reach down and grab. And it's right. just like that whole, you know, trickle effect is peer pressure. Yeah. And it's just kind of how Benaya said, it, it, most of the time it gets a negative connotation. But in all actuality, it can be what you make it. Right. So it's just, it's who you surround yourself around. Do you surround yourself around people who are building you up or are you surrounding yourself around people who you're supposed to be already above and you're lowering yourself to be around those type of people? Right, because yeah. you are the company that you keep. And I feel like everybody has to keep that in mind because for instance, if you want to be this famous actress or you want to do this, or you want to do that, surround yourself with people in those circles. You know, people who are going to encourage you and push you. You want friends who support you in your friend group, not friends who look at you and be like, why do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, right. that's the negative peer pressure. You right. want the positive. You mm -hmm. want the, oh, if you want to do that, let's get together and let's put this project together. Or let's go on YouTube, let's figure out how people work this camera. You know, that's the positive peer pressure. Yeah. And also, so also, you know, you want to make sure that, like, because we like to think about peer pressure as your friends, but you want to look at yourself and make sure me as a friend, am I pushing my other friends in my friend group to, you know, constantly keep in mind whatever goals that they have and make sure that they're always working for it. It doesn't always have to be like 
like the mom giving the pep talk but you know if you know that your friend has let's say an exam coming up in a week or so and you're constantly like hey let's go hang out hey let's do this let's do that you're kind of pushing them in the wrong direction because you know they need to be studying so it's like also yeah keep in mind the company that you keep but also keep in mind the company that you are and your own friend group I friend. think a big challenge for like us especially as black people also being ourselves is um, <coughs> that idea of success like Shana was talking about in the workplace you know me dressing as myself what I'm very comfortable dressing as you know is often not viewed as professional um, no matter how I speak um, or the things that I'm more naturally inclined to you know black culture black media it isn't necessarily always interacting with the idea of professionalism the idea of like the american dream the american standard and so for us millennials like when we want to be ourselves we're often like frowned upon by the the people hiring us our parents who are like this is the cookie cutter way to get a job and to make an income and we often try so hard to break out of that mold by expressing ourselves being creative and I think I feel like the the mission of most millennials is like let me be myself and show that I still can be successful and right, professional. Right. I agree with about everything. Everything they said was accurate. On I point. agree with the birds of a feather. They flock together. We've been I've been hearing that since I was younger. Can you relate? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. We have had a great time today. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time on I Wish You Knew. But they're woke. I think I'm going to wake up and realize, like, I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be strong.